What's up guys, AC Car Shark back again. Um, hopefully you guys like the new intro, I just kind of put that together today. Um, leave some comments, let me know if, if you like that or not. Um, if it's too long, too short, uh, whatever, you know, just, just uh, you know, be honest, leave some comments for me. Uh, I can always switch it up. Uh, today we're going to hit up the top five games of 2009, in my opinion, for the Xbox 360. And um, 360, you, you may be wondering why I'm only doing the 360. Um, because I don't have a PS3, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a PS3, and the Wii, I really just am not a huge fan of, and, uh, I actually don't have one anymore, so, uh, basically I'm going to stick to what I know, and what I know is 360. So, uh, coming in, guys, we're going to kick this thing off, uh, number five is Left 4 Dead 2. Um, the reason why it's number five and not a little bit higher is because I really haven't gotten much more than about two hours of play into this game. Um, but the two hours I did put into this game was just a lot of fun, and um, it was definitely an improvement over the first one. Not not by leaps and bounds. I mean, that was people's big complaint about this game is that uh, that en enough wasn't changed, and I kind of feel like the first one was a lot of fun, and the stuff they changed just made it more fun. So um, just for the reason that I didn't get enough playtime into it yet, um, Left 4 Dead 2 coming in at number five. Uh, number four. We have Assassin's Creed 2, and I know a lot of people are putting this a lot higher on their list. Um, I love this game, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love this game. But um, with the other games that I'm going to be pl uh, putting above it on the list, I just feel that they were better. And uh, some, of the parts, some of the parts did get a little bit tedious. Some of the parts did get really annoying. And, um, you know, like those underground uh, little treasure mines or whatever they were. Like, I, I didn't even bother doing those. I just skipped over it and just uh, went through the rest of the game. But um, I, I definitely do see some faults in this game. But uh, it's just, I mean, leaps and bounds over Assassin's Creed 1. But, um, like I said, the three that are ahead of this game are definitely better, in, in my mind at least. Uh, so that's number four, Assassin's Creed 2. Coming in at number three, we have uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. And I've never really been a big superhero fan. I was never big into comic books, stuff like that. But this game is just pure, 100% pure fun. Um, it's very, very Bioshockish as far as like the display and the um, design of the game and the feeling and the mood it sets. It's very dismal, very dark, and just done perfectly. I absolutely adore this game. I played it from beginning to end. I could not put it down. Uh, same with Assassin's Creed 2, actually. I, I just... I didn't play anything else until I beat it. Um, and actually, I beat Batman, I want to say, within a week, I want to say. I mean, I, I wasn't playing it constantly, but it was just so addictive, so much fun. The the, the battles were were very fluid, uh, fluent, fluid, whatever. Um, and it was just, it felt really, really nice to play. And um, I... I just can't wait for them to, to possibly put out another one, and, and I mean, I'll be jumping on that game as soon as it comes out, but um, if you haven't played that game, guys, yet, absolutely go out, rent a copy, buy a copy, you know, steal a copy, whatever you gotta do, get out there, play that game, it's just absolutely amazing, uh, Batman Arkham Asylum is number three, number two is actually a downloadable game, and it shocked the hell out of me that I liked it as much as I did, and that was Shadow, Shadow Complex. Um, I saw the previews of it, I saw uh, the videos, I downloaded the demo, and I was like, yeah, this is kind of fun, I could see myself playing it, but I didn't download it, because I didn't want to pay 15 bucks for it, so I waited, and they actually had it on sale for uh, a while back, where I got it for, I want to say it was like, I don't know, 800 points, it was like 400 points off, so I got it for 10 bucks instead of 15, so I was like, ah, you know what, it, it was good, I had some fun with it, L let me let me just try it out, for 10 bucks, you know, you can't go wrong, right? It was. I would have paid full price for this game. I would have. I would have gone out to to GameStop and paid sixty bucks. I mean, it, it was just that. It was just that good of a game. I mean, I mean, I would. I would have gone out and paid sixty bucks. And you know, as uh, from watching my videos, I don't pay sixty bucks for from for many games. This game is absolutely just blows you away. And um, it was again 
one of those games that I picked up and started playing, and I believe one time out of the whole time I played this game that I actually sw- – that only one time did I switch out to a different game only because um, I just didn't feel like playing it at that point. Um, it just was absolutely amazing. It was so well done. I already know they're coming out with a sequel, and if you guys have played it and beaten it, you know that the way it ends, I'm not going to give too much away, but it does leave you on a cliffhanger for another copy or another version of this game to come out, like Shadow Complex 2. Um, it's kind of like a 2D shooter, but with some 3D parts and stuff. It's just, it's just you know, it gets you thinking outside the box. Um, it's just, I just absolutely adore this game with, with everything that I am, and I really almost almost put it at number one for uh for 2009 but uh i didn't because number one coming in is borderlands um and i only had this game top top uh top off shadow complex on my list because of the fact that last night i finally did beat the game with pixel sandwich we we played it on co-op from day one we both started out level one together we ended up finishing the game, um, or at least the first pass through of the game. And if, again, again, once you guys get there, or if you have already gotten to that point, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. It's almost like a first ending, but then you continue on after the uh, credits roll. You kind of continue and still um, have other missions to do. So it's it's kind of just almost like a never ending story. It's kind of neat. Um, but it was just like we we were talking about this last night while we were watching the credits, and it was just like this game was made for people like like he and I like. Like, I mean, it's just, it looks like an animated comic book, which if you are fans of the game 13 on the original Xbox, it's it's somewhat in the same style. It's really cool. It's like an animated comic book almost. And, um, I mean, everyone that you blow up and kill, like, they just drop, like, massive amounts of loot. I mean, we were referring to some of the guys as pinatas because they literally blew up and just dropped crap everywhere, like money and guns and ammo and uh, grenades and just everything. It was just so, so amazing. Um, we're still working on the game. We're gonna we're planning on fin- you know uh, continuing on it uh, this coming weekend, basically. Uh, it's like Sunday night, Monday night, something like that. And we're gonna see if we can't like just beat every single mission in the game, uh, side missions included. It's just that addictive and that much fun of a game, guys. Um, and by far, it is de- it is definitely definitely my number one game for the Xbox 360 this year. Now, I know you guys are probably wondering, uh, where is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2? Uh, I did play it. I did beat it. I did like it. Uh, believe it or not, I did like it. But I'm not really much of a co-op player, and I know that game was really geared towards co-op players. And uh, someday, I'm sure I'll hit it up with Pixel Sandwich. I'm sure we'll, we'll try it out and stuff. But I'm just not really big into that game. Um, the storyline for single-player mode, I mean, literally, I beat it in a day and a half, and it was good while it lasted, but it didn't last long enough. And uh, it definitely does get an honorable mention from me. But um, you, you guys, I mean, if they're making this game, they got to make it for everyone. They got to make it for every audience. And I'm part of the audience that really doesn't play in in Xbox Live parties with five friends or whatever, and you know, plays this massive multiplayer online stuff. And that's really why it didn't make my top five. Um, another game that I really feel gets an honorable mention, but just couldn't crack that top five because the top five were so strong was um chronicles of riddick um assault on dark athena uh, i had never played butcher bay and um i'm actually still trying to get through butcher bay and i'm having so much fun with that game it's it's addictive it's fun um but again like i said it just didn't have the caliber to to compete with games like borderlands and shadow complex and batman and just all the top five i had already mentioned but uh, those two games definitely do get an honorable mention from me just to, uh, to throw that in there before I start getting some hate mail saying I didn't put Call of Duty on my top five. Um, it doesn't deserve a top five spot in my mind, but um, that's just me. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it. That's uh, that's my top five Xbox 360 games for 2009. Uh, stay tuned to the channel, guys. Um, I will have more unboxings coming next week. Um, I also have uh, a planned video for a Borderlands review. Um, that's going to take me a little while to get together, but I will get that together for you guys. Um, but that's going to do it for me for today, guys. Uh, until next time, this is AC Card Shark. Take care.